So uh, my name is Jeremy Stoltzfus. I am a senior technical consultant uh, with RPI, and of course, uh, and I've been um, in the Lawson space for about 15 years. You know, in the main session, we were talking. Um, we were talking about who's been around the longest, and I know that's certainly not me, but I do remember those paper patches and having to painfully uh, type in the COBOL code manually. Um, worked for a couple of customers before uh, making the plunge into the consulting side. And I'm Matthew Slazak. I've also got about 20 years of Infor experience. I'm not quite at that level where people had the, uh, you know, the 1986. I'm jealous of that. However, I do think that I've got to retire now. So uh, if, if I've had 20 years, that's too long now. So um, what was your first version, Matt? Uh, the first version I was on was 7 1 something. Okay, yeah. It's been a long time. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but been working, you know, with it for quite a while. Been working with GHR um, and the landmark side um, now for coming up on about ten years by itself with the very early days of that. So uh, been around the block for a while too. So, all right, just a little bit. Um, you obviously are here because you want to learn about Mingo homepages. So what we're going to talk about, we're just going to briefly <coughs> highlight what they are. Um, go into some of the features, um, some of the administration components, and then um, just look at a few examples that we have um, and give you some ideas and, on what they can be used for and how they can be built out. So let's start out with what are Mingle home pages. So Infor has designed these Mingle home page pages to be pretty much a one-stop shop for everything in your Infor product suite. Um, so they are links to various components of your different applications. Um, they're mainly, it's a collection of widgets and they can be grouped, they're grouped by role, function, or purpose. And uh, again, with deep links back directly into your, uh, your applications. And then, you know, we can configure, those pages can be configured to be um, informational, so just displaying a lot of information or interactive or some combination of both. And as we get into some of those examples, uh, you'll see some of that play out. Just at a real high level, these are the, the various types of widgets that are available uh, to build out in your home pages. So we'll kind of go through each one of these, just highlight a few from each area, um, and uh, we'll, we'll go through it that way. So yeah, the, the first ones that we're going to talk about are the application widgets. Now, as Jeremy said, it's really, you know, these were designed to be a one-stop shop. You know, everything that has kind of been poured into the, uh, into the Infor infrastructure is now accessible by these home pages. Um, and one of the first ways you would see that is in the application widgets that are out there. Um, I could probably take, it would take a, probably a good minute or two to just go through all of them, uh, all the different widgets that are available. Um, this screenshot that you see in there is actually just a very small portion of the widgets that are available. But just to give you an idea on that, you've got things that are um, from all the different portions of, uh, of Infor. So you've got things like the GHR, um, manager space widgets. So things like um, information about my team, um, my uh, the, the flight risk for people. So that kind of goes into the succession realm. Um, their birthdays and anniversaries, that really simple widget, which everybody wants to see in manager space um, is called out as its own widget. And we can see it right on, to, uh, on one of the dashboards. Um, but it also cuts over beyond just the GHR side. You've got things like unapproved requisitions and invoices that are past due. So not only looking at that side of it from just the, the GHR side, invoices, financials, uh, SCM, you're getting all of that all in one place. Um, there's really, you know, it's really difficult for a lot of managers um, when they start to go into the GHR world, uh, for example, um, and say, well, you know, I also have to go and sign off on a purchase rec. Um, so now I have to go over to this other portion of the system, a different space, 
and do my sign offs in there. Um, so it's really difficult for people to kind of wrap their head around and kind of bounce around between these different worlds. Um, but this it, here with the application widgets, we can put them all in one consolidated place for them to be able to go directly from doing a rave for one of their employees to entering an Ask HR, uh, Ask HR ticket um, right down to, I want to go over to see new candidates who applied for my job requisitions. Uh, they can see it all on this single home page here and not have to bounce around between 50 different spaces that they might have, uh, have, uh, <laughs> have access to. The nice thing about all of these is when they have one of these widgets up on their screen, they're able to just click into it and it's going to drill right into those landmark or into landmark uh, to get to GHR stuff, or it's going to bounce over to anything that we've got set up. So they don't have to go and worry about, you know, logging in over here or switching to a different space. Just from that click from the homepage, they're gonna go into it. Um, and again, think about it as this one-stop shop. We don't wanna have people wasting their time bouncing around and navigating to get to things. Just like in the old days of, uh, of Lawson, you know, when you had to go in and remember that HR 11 was your system code to get to the main employee record, but then I have to do a personnel action and I have to type in, PA52. Um, again, this is just to consolidate it all into one place, make it very easy for people to navigate um, without having to, you know, bounce around to different spots. Okay, you can go forward. Um, when it comes to business intelligence, you know, there's not, uh, there's not a ton of different widgets here. Um, but there is one simple widget that allows you to basically display any burst report. So you've got burst deployed in your environment. You can you can bring that in that report, um, and you'll see when we get into the uh, some of the examples how these widgets can be resized on the pages. Um, but think about all of the different metrics that some of your senior leadership want to look at, and um, you know we don't we want to just give that information to those people right as soon as they log in so that's the the concept with the home pages and the burst widgets you can configure as many as you want uh, on a particular page or configure a couple different pages um, with those burst reports and they can be sized different you can show a lot of information um, based on on your burst reporting that you, you've got available um, when we look at talk about some of the statistics and usage widgets um, there's just a lot of different information. This would be more for your IT side of things, right? To monitor what's going on. Um, you know, we've got monitoring your system usage. So it will actually show how many people are logging into your system um, over, you know, a time period. Um, if you're using ION bots to send messages back and forth uh, between the applications and the components, you can get a cons uh, an overview of, of what's happening there. You can see if things are, are moving the way that they should be, um, looking for any alerts um, for tasks, things like that. Um, and then, like I said, just in general, monitoring some of that, that ION API traffic too, uh, making sure that you know your interfaces are working the way you expect them to. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of information. I also have um, data lake. So if you're using Burst, of course, um, you want to monitor how much how much of my data lake is consumed by the various objects so you can you can uh, keep an eye on that and can and monitor that as well um so there was a question uh, that came in uh were we using the web widget or the burst bit widget uh to display those uh the burst reports there is a specific one for the for the burst widget or for the burst report so a specific burst widget for burst reports. Great. Okay, another nice uh, set of widgets that we have inside there are social widgets. Um, now, you might think that that would be a link out to Facebook or some sort of social media. Uh, that's not really the case of what we're doing right here. Um, there's some ways to get some of that information in other places within the system. But this really has to do with things like announcements or if we have, if you're using a uh, posting within Mangle um, where you can start to see that information um, streaming inside there. So think about the announcement as something like a, um, 
just letting people know that open enrollment is coming up. Um, so we know that this is going to come up at a certain time, um, and we can actually, we'll show you later on, um, we can schedule this. Um, we're able to go in and just say, okay, as of, you know, next Tuesday morning at 8 a.m., it's going to open open enrollment, and you're going to be able to have that announcement show up at the top um, or in another portion of, of the screen with this social widget. Um, so it's really nice that we're able to kind of put that in there. Um, you can also embed the widgets inside or embed images inside there. So up on that screen there, you can see that there's two different styles of, uh, of the announcement showing up. One with the, the widget that's on the desktop and the other one can be a nice picture that we put inside there. We'll also show you how to do the banner uh, as well later on with that. So there's a couple different ways for us to see that and they do become actionable pieces for people. Um, the post and the stream, same things. If we're, if we're assigned a ticket, for example, with HRSD, um, we can start to see that stream showing up inside there as well. Um, so we can track through how tickets are progressing. Yeah, and that's uh, just something that uh, the implementations that I've been working on recently has come to, come to light. You know, we saw the whole Mingle piece uh, when it was released a couple years ago and the whole social collaboration on, on things, right? And everybody was kind of confused, well, what can it be used for? Um, we've seen, I've seen a lot of uh, interest in that type of activity right now. So having having a widget right on your homepage for things that you're monitoring or or keeping an eye on, right? Those Those come right to your attention as soon as you log into the system. Right. Nothing worse than having people have to hunt around for information. If we can display it for them right up front in some of these widgets and kind of let them have that information before they even have to find it, it's really more helpful for them. Save time in navigation. Just give it to them, give it to them up front. Yep. Uh, taking a look at a couple of the just generic utility widgets that are available. So there's a notes widget and it is literally just free text. Uh, it could be a checklist for you, um, just kind of a reminder to you of things that you want to do. Um, there's the bookmarks widget. So if you're utilizing the Mingle bookmarks, um, so when you're on a particular application and it doesn't matter where in Mingle you are, um, whether you're on an ION page or you're in GHR or you're in FSM on various screens, um, there's the, the bookmark icon. You click it and it adds it to your mingle bookmarks and then so you can have that link uh, to, or have that list of those bookmarks displayed right right there as well um, the menu uh, the menu widget is great for um, adding links uh, to it could be internal applications uh, within your landmark uh, your HR or financial applications or it could be external links as well um, so the examples that I have here one that I use all the time is docs.info.com or the info tech blog, right? So just um, a way to push that information out um, and make it readily available for you. Um, one of the, I think one of a, a, a key widget here that's available, um, especially as you're talking about multi-tenant environments is this what's new um, widget. So you might have a, you know, a super user page, for example, and you know your your users are always like, well, how do I know? How do I stay on top of what's being come up, what's coming out in every CU that's coming out every month? This um, what's new widget you can see right here. Uh, I know it's a little hard to see, but um, uh, it does say, um, you know, the May update. So it's got links to all the release notes for the the latest CU that's been released. So uh, a good one to kind of uh, keep an eye on. So as we start defining pages, and, and let's take a step back for a minute. You know, I've, I've worked with a couple of clients now on this and what that looks like and what it takes to build out. You know, I recommend just getting, if you've got data, you've got activity in your system as you're doing your implementation, just get somebody, whoever's gonna be uh, responsible for that, throw as many widgets out on a page as they can, uh, just to see the content and what's available because you'll find some widgets, depending on how you're using the application, won't show you any content, so they're not relevant. Um, but certainly there's gonna be plenty that are. So just reviewing that with your, your key users your as your implementation team looking all of that. And so then you think about starting, how do I, how do I define and roll out content? 
right? So, you know, let's talk about the multiple pages that you could you could deploy. And again, we'll get into some examples to show us how we built some of these out just as an example. But, you know, think about it from an employee perspective, where as soon as the employee logs in, you know, everybody meets that employee role. Um, you know, they see important information relevant to an employee, or it might be a manager, or it might be an HR person. Um, so as we look at that, then we're basically creating these pages um, as a group of widgets that make sense to that particular person or group of people. So here, the example I have is an employee page. Um, and I can you can see here that I've got it specifically rolled out to anybody that has the employee ST group or security role, and that is the landmark role. So any of the roles that are available within the Mingle, um, the Mingle framework, so it could be landmark roles, it could be um, ION roles, it could be burst roles, any of those roles that are a part of the Mingle framework will be available for you to select here to roll those pages out and give security. Um, then as we look at um, we look at published pages to specific users. So this is a mandatory pages. So we're pushing those pages out, forcing an employee to have employee the employee page. Um, and so again, you assign that and you give a priority. Um, I know it's, it's uh, in the background here. The first priority is manager base, and then the second one is employee base. So in this instance, we said, hey, we want if the if the person logging in and is a manager. We want them to see the manager page before they see the employee page. Um, so you can you can organize those rules with a different priority, however you want. But again, we're just adding a security role, saying, hey, you've got the employee um, or manager role. We're pushing this content out to you so that you don't have to go out to the page catalog uh, and and pick it for yourself. All right, so we started talking about, um, you know, some of the widgets that were out there. And one of the ones that I, I focused on for a little bit was the that announcements tab. Um, I, I mentioned before that, you know, they, they can be a banner or they can be a widget. Uh, so what you saw a couple minutes ago um, was just the widget form. So it was embedded in the middle of that page. But if you want to go ahead and call that out a little bit better uh, and make it a little bit more visible for people, I have that same widget also showing up as a banner. So right up at the top of your screen, when so that green portion at the bottom, um, that's the manager screen. And right up top on that, we've got the banner. So we can see that same announcement displayed up on the top of the banner. And if we want to go through and assign an action inside there, we can actually embed an action button inside there so that it will actually go right over to the person's open enrollment screen, for example, so that they can get right into it. Um, I mentioned before that these are also something that is able to be scheduled. Um, so if we know that it's just always going to be published out there, if it's just basic information for um, you know, other links or helpful links for your employees, we could put that um, announcement out there and it would be available for people to just be able to click on and go whenever. But if we wanted to do something like schedule that open enrollment flag, um, we could assign that to the employee uh, page and just have that show up specifically during the open enrollment periods. Um, prevents you from having to have somebody sitting there at 12.01 a.m. Make sure you flip that and turn that on so that people can actually go and log into it. Um, you know, have one that shows on the employee page two weeks before open enrollment starts saying it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And then at 12.01, have it flip over to be an active link with a different banner um, so they can actually go in and do that. Um, another nice thing that you can do about this is you can set a recurrence on it. Um, you know, depending upon what you have is, you know, a time collection system or something um, or, you know, something that you have to do just on a recurring basis. Um, you know, we're, we're living in the world where we always have to make sure we're submitting our timesheet at a specific date and time. So we could schedule a banner or an announcement to show up on everybody's employee page to say, hey, remember to actually click submit on your time. And we're going to have that show up every Friday at 8 a.m. And at, you know, when we hit Saturday, it's going to go away. 
And then two weeks from now, we're going to get that same reminder. Um, so it's really nice that we can just have that recurrence showing up in there. Um, one example that Infor gives is for that open enrollment screen, maybe you schedule that to happen every year in November. It might be a little bit extreme, but you could do something like that if you want to. The other nice thing about this is just like those other pages um, where we assigned it based on a manager role, so all the managers are going to get, going to get that manager widget, um, we can do the same thing with these announcements. So if we wanted to go in and say, we're going to assign a special announcement for anybody who has supervisory responsibilities or performance evaluation responsibilities, I can assign that to that group of people. Anybody who's got that supervisory responsibility, they're going to get that announcement uh, on specific dates and times saying, make sure we're pushing out the person's performance evaluation or it's time for their six month reevaluation. So we can put that out there, assign it to specific people and schedule it. So we don't have to remember these things, get it out there, get that information to people when they need it. Okay, just a little overview of the administration and some of the features that are available. Um, so you've got, there's a bunch of different settings, of course, and I don't wanna go into all the details of that. Um, you know, uh, there's a, some things about, you know, maximum number of pages that a user can subscribe to. Um, you know, thinking about your user base that's, base that's using this, there's a couple different security roles. Of course, there's a home pages user, which everybody's going to have, but then you've got the, the, the builders, right, who are going to be designing and building the pages, and you want to give them the ability to publish those. Um, and so that's what you know, I, I briefly mentioned the page catalog, and so as your your power users that are using this and, and building out those pages, they can publish them to those page catalogs. And if they're not, um, uh, this is also where, like in the administration courses, where you would push out um, forced update or forced pages that uh, are forced on to a, an individual um, that they see every time they log in, um, and then. Um, the, the widgets. So which widgets are accessible? Um, you can choose to turn off certain widgets if you don't want to use them um, as well. Um, one key thing that I really want to want to kind of note is the import and export utilities. Um, so you can export these. Uh, you're building them out in your test environment. You've got you've got a bunch of pages built. You don't have to go and rebuild them into your production environment. You can just export them to a file and um, then um, load it into a different environment. Um, I see we have a question about scheduling a widget. For example, can you, during payroll processing, the link for tax withholding is removed? So is this to specifically display or not display a widget, I'm assuming? And the answer to that is no, I have not seen that feature. Um, right, okay. So the answer to that is no, I have not seen a feature where you can display or hide. What you can do though is, um, and again, this is a maintenance thing um, that somebody would have to manually do is basically just edit that published page um, at the time that you wouldn't want that to, to display. Um, I did meet, briefly mention the page catalog here. So here I've got three pages that are, are built in my catalog. Um, and by uh, subscribing uh, to them, by clicking on the, the plus sign on the page, it's going to add it to my, my available pages when I log in. So let's talk about a couple examples that we could have out there. Um, so here uh, we're just showing you a very very simplistic uh, view of the employee space uh, or the employee widget um, or page sorry <laughs> the employee page that we've got out there um, now something to note on this is what it, and i know it's really hard to see on the screen right now um, but these are all things that are basically in uh, your core employee space record um, but they're all in different portions of the screen. So you always have to go in and click into my profile and drill around and get into um, your health components, for example. 
but let's just say that you know we've got uh, you know flu season is starting, and so we want to make sure that everybody is uh, up on their flu shots. So I could have that assigned to me as a health component and have that called out right on the employee page so that, that I can see that something is due. Um, I can also go in and see that um, I can put my own notes right on the own, uh, on this homepage so that I can just get right into it, add a quick note for myself whenever I need to. Um, I can also see that there are raves that are out there for myself. Um, we can put all of that information up front instead of them having to bounce around inside there and try to find it. Um, so that's something that's um, that's a nice way to kind of, kind of give everybody those quick pieces of information that they need. Does not prohibit them in any way, shape, or form from going in and drilling deeper into their profile or anything like that. We've got the links right there. They can go right into it um, and drill deeper if they need to. But here's some of the quick hit information that they might need. Um, another quick view of whoops. Uh, another quick view of a manager space page. Um, again, you can see up at the top of this page, we've got that banner widget in. Um, right up front, if we've got something really important, we can put that up there. Again, schedule that banner for when it's important. We can put in those uh, action widgets if we need to. Um, so it's all set right inside there. But the nice thing here is we start to see, um, and it, it's hard, hard to see on the screen, but um, I've got information about my team specifically, so my core manager space information. Um, but let's, you know, we, we know that something like credentials for my team, it's really important that we get that out there. We've got to get that information uh, in a nice, efficient manner. And we don't want people to necessarily have to wait for a report of expiring credentials. I can put that widget right on the manager's homepage and start to see it. I can also see that somebody has requested time off. I need to get that information uh, approved for them as soon as possible. Um, I can see that my team had, uh, somebody on my team got a few new raves. I really wanna see that as a manager, see that you know I've got some people who are really rock stars out there. You can put that information right up front. Um, same thing with like the talent acquisition side here with looking at, you know, there's always a frustration for managers right now Looking at talent acquisition, they want to be able to see real quick, do I have any new candidates that are out there? So we can take that widget and just plop it right onto the manager homepage, and we're going to see it right inside there. Speaking of talent acquisition, we can uh, go forward and look at something like the recruiter homepage. Um, the recruiter homepage is kind of like, if you're familiar with talent acquisition right now, um, there's the recruiter today page, um, which is very helpful for a lot of man or for a lot of recruiters to be able to see information that's going on, um, information about the requisitions they've got open. They might have to go in and you know approve an offer, or an offer has been approved. So I want to push it forward and actually distribute it to the employees or, or to the candidates. So I can get that information right up front here on this widget um, instead of having to go through the Today page. The Today view is very nice. You can get some information on there. However, it's a limit. it is limited. You can't always get all of the information out there um, in, in the same manner. The home page is allowing us to do it though. I can get all that information, put some of these widgets on here and see it up front. But then the other side of it is again, we want to train our recruiters to just, you know, live and die on this page and make sure you're seeing everything and keep those offers moving. Especially nowadays, we want to make sure that we're getting an offer out and grabbing that talent as quickly as we can. So I might have some tasks or alerts that have come up. Um, let's say that I have a new, uh, somebody who has applied for a nursing position. Maybe I have an alert on that. And if I'm looking at this page right here, I can have that alert display right on that bottom corner. Um, I also might have a task that has been put out there from a manager saying, you know, I need to, can we get an interview scheduled with this person? Um, we want to see that upfront. We want that recruiter to be able to respond to that information as quickly as possible. And putting that widget onto our recruiter homepage, we're going to be able to do that and have them go right into the system, click on that link, and uh, be able to schedule something right from there. 
But even beyond that, um, I've also got something like our rave up at the top. So I might be going through and doing this, um, looking at my requisitions, seeing some people coming in. I might be able to rave about a certain employee who's been a rock star in terms of referring a whole bunch of extra people to these positions. So I might want to throw the rave out there without having to navigate into employee space and find recognize a coworker. Throw that right up front here on our uh, recruiter page, and we can just do it right from here. Um, before we move to the next slide, just a couple of questions that came up. Um, mm -hmm. One, I did post the security roles out in the chat. So there's three three main security roles to be able to access Mingo homepages. Uh, of course, homepages-user is for anybody who's just a viewer, a consumer of the content. We've got homepages content administrator. They're responsible for creating the pages and publishing them, basically maintaining the page catalog. And then you've got the home pages administrator, which gives you full access to settings, building pages and, and deploying and security and all of that. Um, there was another question uh, from Claire about how is security built in? And um, I think what this is referring to and clarify if I'm incorrect, so when you have a, a, a widget on your homepage and you see certain data, it's using your built-in landmark security to display that data. So for example, there is the, um, the manager widgets. So it's not going to let you see people that don't report to you um, and that type of thing. And same thing if there's an administrator widget, which if you've got the full admin role in GHR, it allows you to see all the uh, resources in the organization. Um, if your security is modified and you only have a subset of those uh, those resources, then you would only see that. So I think, does that answer, hopefully that answers your question. Yep, perfect. Okay, um, just a couple more quick examples. And we'll take some more questions if there are more. Um, these are some brand new widgets that I think were just released this week, actually, into the multi-tenant environment. Um, so we've got some FSM data-specific widgets. Um, so this particular example, this is one of those interactive widgets, right? So I can see very quickly uh, my unapproved requisitions of the last 90 days. And if I click on any one of those pie chart um, wedges, it actually changes the widget and it looks like it is on the on the right hand side and gives me the detail of all of those requisitions now at this point i can i can do a search so if i type right in that search box um i could type in you know anything that's showing up on these cards and it will will bring back those those requisitions um and then that of course is then that quick link so if i double click on that top requisition that's going to take me directly to the requisition screen within the FSM application. And again, just another example, here's, here's one of expiring contracts that are coming up in the next zero to 30, 31 to 16, 61 to 90 days. And again, drilling into that. So those interactive, um, those interactive widgets that give you more data and you don't even actually have to go all the way into the application if you're looking for a specific one. So even these, um, widgets can just help you find that specific record that you are that you are looking for and with that we'll take any other additional questions just uh next up in this particular channel is the um the tech roundtable discussion so there'll be myself and along with a couple other uh technical consultants um there with general roundtable discussions and um, just a reminder that the happy hour game show at, at uh, five o'clock. And then every Friday we have a uh, RPI Tech Talks webinar. So please uh, visit our website to find out more information. Okay, so we do have a couple more questions that have come in here. Um, yep. Have we ever set up a weather widget for a client? So there is not specifically a weather widget. However, if you there is a web page widget that if you have some uh, URL that you could reference and point to that shows a condensed um, weather um, uh, information, then you could certainly uh, configure a, a web um, a web image or a web content widget 
to <laughs> display that information. Right. I know the uh, there are some things like that already built into like the rich client, but you would have to do something like that uh, to get that over in the in mingle over here. So um, another question that came in is: Is there a certain version of mingle you need to be on to get this? So this is part of uh, the Infor OS tech stack. So um, of course that's what's running the um, that is what is running the 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 application itself so everything all of your 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 applications are running within that so i believe that is version 12 of mingle um that that this the home pages is part of okay um in can you show the settings we have for the burst widget can get to the web widget display a burst report but cannot get the burst widget to work um, I'm not sure if we've got anything available right now on that, if we've got our uh, sandbox that can, if, I can show, if we can show anything like that on that. Yeah, our sandbox isn't currently set up. I'm just grabbing a couple of screenshots to show any of the specific settings, but we can make that as a takeaway and uh, I can certainly try to get that information out to you. Um, question, is this for multi-tenant only? The answer is no. Um, you you do get this, like I said, as part of the N4 OS stack now. Um, so, and it's part of Mingle 12, so that can be deployed on premise. Um, but uh, you're obviously, you if you are on premise with your um, your Mingle, your N4 OS stack, then you're not going to get the up, the updated uh, widgets as they're pushed out. 